Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway here on a Wednesday, ready to uh, continue on throughout the week. A week without K-State football, or at least the game being played, but still a lot to consider and discuss with K-State, who last night kind of learned their fate with the college football playoff rankings and I don't know if it stings a little less after the loss to know that you still have the respect from the committee, but you do have to ask yourself, if K-State doesn't lose to Houston, where are they at in the college football playoff top 25? Because they check in at number 19. Um, teams ahead of them directly, Pitt at 18 at 7-1, Iowa State at 17 at 7-1, Ole Miss 7-2 and at 16, and LSU at 15. My honest thought would be is that if K-State – were eight and one right now. I think they would probably be. I think they'd probably be fifteen at least. I we've seen historically the college football playoff committee has given respect to K State, and they obviously still got it despite the bad loss on Saturday. It just makes it a little bit more disappointing because K State doesn't lose a game that they shouldn't lose. Then this is a team that. I don't think it's likely because you would get a second loss at some point if you don't win the Big 12 title, but you could reasonably start to think, hey, maybe we have a chance at being that second Big 12 team, and maybe we could get an at-large. We know now that's just not going to be the case with the way things set up for K-State. But, Drew, your reaction to K-State being number 19 in the college football playoff poll? I think it's surprising. And like you said, it does kind of make you think of, like, what if K-State didn't lose to Houston? The, the thing that kind of gives me a pause about kind of where I think K-State would be would be that usually the big committee does give the Big 12 a lot of respect. But then you see BYU at 9, you see Tex or you see Iowa State at 17, and, and, and then you see Colorado, I believe, at 20. And, and that kind of makes me think, okay, at first when we had just like seen the raw 19 rating, uh, before we'd seen like Iowa State or BYU appear, I'm like, okay, top 15 is probably pretty likely, but now it's probably like, okay, maybe they were they would be a, like number 15, where before I think that you could have made a, a pretty good argument, really, if their one loss was to BYU, and they're eight and one, and they have one of the best wins in the Big 12 this year, going to Colorado and winning, that you probably would have thought, okay maybe maybe like 12 13 but but the the more that i've kind of dug in and, and iowa state being 17 after losing to texas tech probably isn't the greatest sign of where k-state would have been because you could think like theoretically like k-state beats houston them and iowa state are just flipped maybe i just i can you really get that much respect coming off the loss? Like, I, there has to be some penalty, you would think, in their eyes. Now, here's the other thing, and this is where some of the other stuff that goes on with the rankings wouldn't make a ton of sense because you would start to say, well, that doesn't check out with this. But if you're not looking at what have you done recently, you're just looking at, okay, teams have played eight or nine games. What does that body of work look like? Um, then it's probably fair to have K-State at 19, but then if you're saying that, you maybe would make the case they should be a little bit higher. Then that would certainly make you say, well, why is BYU only at nine? Um, because K-State is getting respect, I think, at 19, despite the loss to Houston, that for some reason BYU is not getting that respect for beating SMU and K-State, two teams that are inside the top 20 of this poll, uh, because BYU is camping out at number nine right now behind Indiana, who BYU has got the better resume than Indiana. Um, Indiana, I mean, the schedule's weak. I think they've only played two teams above 500, uh, and that's Nebraska and Washington, who, who are both five and four. I think obviously Tennessee's getting a lot of the credit because they have the, the home win against Alabama. Um, but like, what else you got going on there? Like, BYU should be higher in this thing. Uh, so yeah, BYU at a minimum should be above Penn State, Indiana, and Tennessee. And I would also say Boise State probably deserves more uh, love as well because, I mean, Ohio State's only loss was by one at Oregon. Boise State's only loss was by three at Oregon. So 
you know, I get the the wins that Ohio State have. It's better than than anything Boise State has or is going to have. Well, but, really, just the win Ohio State has because it, it's not like Ohio State has beat anybody really spectacular other than Penn State last week. Yeah, no, that's that's true. I don't know. It's just it's fascinating. Uh, the Big Twelve going to be kicking itself because Iowa State and K-State dropped some stinkers that they really probably shouldn't have last week. K-State more than Iowa State just because Texas Tech at least deserves some respect. They're playing better. They're uh, a better they're in a better situation than Houston right now, but I don't know. We'll see how it continues to play out. It'll also be interesting because K-State is not going to play this week. So, uh, they'll have another ranking come out before they play another game. And we'll see if the committee does anything different about that or, you know, because the AP and the coaches poll, uh, they'll drop you out or something. I think it was Missouri dropped out of the AP this past week because they just were on a bye week after being in there. It's like, how, how does that really compute and make sense? But uh, that is where K-State sits in the college football playoff uh, and, and how things sit right now. Now, in terms of K-State making it to the college football playoff, Really, the only path still possible appears to be win out, get some help from Colorado by losing a game somewhere in your final three. And then after that, it is you got to take care of your business if you're K-State, win your final three, beat BYU likely in the Big 12 title game for a rematch. In your mind right now, is that the likely scenario? We didn't do our, our race to Arlington win play show, but – uh, is is that the path you see in your eyes, or what do you think the Big 12 title game is as we sit here right now? Yeah, I mean, that that I feel like has to be the most likely option if you're K-State going forward. And, and I still think that that might be where we're heading towards because there, there is still a part of me that thinks that Colorado is probably not good enough to run the table the rest of the way and that they'll trip up at some point. I've been kind of crapping on them all year, but that Utah seems like a team that, that, it, that is kind of built to beat Colorado. So I, I could see that. And then, and then all that does is just set up your winner goes to Arlington game for Farmageddon. Uh, essentially, because I, I believe Iowa State also would have the tiebreaker for Colorado. So Colorado, I think, has to just win out. And, and that's like their only path in. Uh, but you kind of look at it from that perspective. And yeah, I think that that's probably the most likely scenario, which is still why I've kind of gone back and said this a few times now. The loss to Houston really sucked. Like we were there. We know better than anybody that it it sucked. But with Iowa State losing, the only thing that really changes is now you need Colorado to lose a game. Everything is still kind of right there for K State to take. And if they win these last three games and don't make it to Arlington, you will like really kick yourself for losing to that to Houston. But again, the a 10 and 2 regular season, you're never gonna hear me complain about. Yeah, Colorado, if you look at them, they have really their next three are probably the ones where you think they could take a loss. At Texas Tech, home against Utah, at KU. Um, I, I just don't think that they'll lose that last home game on uh, Black Friday against Oklahoma State. I think Oklahoma State is kind of proven to be really, really that bad. Yeah, so I, I just <laughs> – unless they have a uh, – let's let's get one last one in here for Coach Gundy, give him a win, and who knows what is playing out there, but uh, I don't see it. So you're hoping it comes. Obviously, it, it would be the, the earlier the better if you're on the K-State side of things, and then you have to take care of your business if you're K-State. But what I wanted to bring up today is, look, like you said, we were there. We know how much that game against Houston sucked for K-State, how bad they were. Um, how they needed to be better, all of these different things. There's no doubt about that. But I got to thinking about this because you go, man, the weather was bad. Look, if if the rain doesn't play out the way that it does, K State is throwing the ball well enough in that game before you know you start not being able to hold on to a ball. They probably win that game by seven to ten points. 
Do you walk out of there still feeling good about how it played out? Probably not. You're probably thinking there are some issues here, but a win's a win. You kind of keep on that path, whatever. Think back to last year, though, as the season wears on and similar to K-State, Oklahoma State took an early loss in Big 12 play, and then they started kind of getting into a rhythm, strolling along, making things happen, won a couple close games, won in some blowouts, and then they went on the road and had a pretty inexplicable loss with two games left to play in the season. They went on the road to UCF, and in a rainstorm, they get beat 45-3. to So K-State's margin was not as bad as what Oklahoma State's was when they went to UCF. But that UCF team last season ended up finishing things out. Uh, that was the last win of the seat or the next last win of the season for Houston or UCF. They, they did beat Houston uh, in the, the finale. Uh, Dana Holgerson's, you know, parting gift was his team losing their, their last game. So it was not a great UCF team that they lost to. And look, there's a scenario now where if you're looking at Houston, they very well could squeak their way into a bowl game. They have to win two of their final three, but they play Arizona next weekend. And then they play Baylor at home and they finish at BYU. They probably won't win at BYU to close things out, but they could win their next two. It very easily could happen. But they for sure will play harder than Arizona will. <laughs> yes, that there's no doubt about that. I Arizona, boy, that's uh, they they do not give a crap at all. I had them last in my power rankings this week because of that. I Oklahoma State is bad, and there are some questions there. Oklahoma State is still at least doing some things during games, and I'm like, they haven't fully quit. Alan Bowman just might be their quarterback. Um, Arizona, it's like. What's the deal here? But the comparison that I want to make goes even deeper than just, oh, team in the Big 12 race, goes on the road, loses a game to a team that they probably shouldn't have in just you know inexplicable fashion, the rainstorm. Break this down even more. Oklahoma State last year, most people would think, oh, they were known for their, their run and how everything played off of Ollie Gordon, which is very true. Ollie Gordon last season, 1,700 yards, over six yards of carry. He was great on the ground. But Oklahoma State was a team that had to throw the ball to be able to have success throughout the season. Alan Bowman last year attempted 500 passes, which we talked about was far more than anybody else in the Big 12 last season. In that game against UCF, they weren't able to run worth a crap, 25 carries for 52 yards, and they had to throw the ball 36 times in the rain. And it resulted in a big fat L against UCF. Meanwhile, UCF only had to throw the ball 19 times in the game, and they were efficient in doing it. They were 12 of 19 for 299 yards and three touchdowns. Um, now, it also helps that R.J. Harvey had 24 carries for 200 yards and three touchdowns in the game. But th this is the thing where these teams can make it happen. It, not every team that plays for a Big 12 title is going to be like 2022 K-State when they have a loss where the loss can be explained. It's like, okay, you lost at the team that went undefeated in the regular season, and then you lost by a possession to Texas, who was one of the three best teams in the Big 12. And we know that talent-wise was probably the best in the Big 12 that season. Sometimes you're going to have the really bad, really crappy ones in there and you can still have everything in front of you, and you can fix your problems. And that's the thing to go and look at Oklahoma State and what they did. Now, it wasn't pretty moving forward. If you look, there are some similarities to how things have gone for K-State because after that blowout against West Virginia, K-State now close lo close win against KU, loss in a game that you shouldn't uh, against Houston. And then O-State last year, they went on to, to beat Houston and BYU in close margins by 13 and then in double overtime um, after having a, a blowout win over Cincinnati, close win over Oklahoma, your rival, and then you go into everything else. But they rebounded, they recovered, and the following two games before the Big 12 championship, Ollie Gordon went for 164 and 166 yards. They got their run game back on track, and that was the only game last year in Big 12 play uh, that 
UCF did not have a 100-yard rusher, or excuse me, Oklahoma State did not have a 100-yard rusher, was that game against UCF when Ollie Gordon led them with 25 rushing yards. So my point is, while it feels really crappy, while we know that K-State has things to work through and figure out, there is a very real situation in front of us to where they get this thing fixed and this team is still capable of being in Arlington because at the end of the day, if you ask me, if a team puts it together, realistically can put it together, because I, you know we could say, well, you know, if Utah had all their pieces or whatever, or uh, you know, if Arizona for some reason had a good coach or w- whatever. But realistically, in front of us, the teams that are competing for this thing: BYU, Iowa State, Texas Tech, K State, Colorado, Arizona State. I'll throw them in there for this. If you get the best version of any of those five or six teams, I'm taking K State still, and. That doesn't mean that I'm exonerating K-State for the loss and how they played at Houston. I still think it was crap. It's still not fun to think about because, as I will always say, yes, there's the part of me that my parents went to K-State. I grew up a K-State fan. I went to K-State. I I love seeing K-State do well. But there's the professional side of me, too, where this job's a whole heck of a lot easier if people aren't bitching and moaning about how K-State played because they lost. Like, when things are all sunshine and rainbows, it makes this job a lot easier, but nah. I'm not, I'm not wiping that out. It still sucked last week. It was still bad, but I think if we're, we're looking at this and we have the, the, the data and the history of last year and other years, I'm sure we can go back and find them. K-State is still very much in this thing and Colorado is not good enough to get out of this thing without another loss. They're going to play some scary teams in Texas tech and Kansas on the road that I think could get them. And obviously, we know Colorado is going to get everybody's best shot because that's what everybody's looking forward to right now on their schedules. Um, I think they lose another. And K-State, you have two or three at home. Then you go on the road. You're going to play a rival. You're going to be highly motivated in that game. As long as K-State doesn't have a game as bad as they did on the offensive line against Houston again, and you you avoid another what the hell type of weather game that you've now gotten to in the last two years, I think K-State is going to go back to Arlington and have a chance to avenge that loss against BYU. Yeah, I'm right there with you. It's it's nice that you've joined the bandwagon because that this has kind of been how I felt really post-Sunday show because Saturday instant reaction, you could definitely see that I was wearing it. Sunday for the Sunday show, you could definitely see that I was wearing it. And then, like, as we were driving back, I was like, okay, it's not as bad as you think because Iowa State lost. Like, K-State did get kind of lucky in Iowa State losing last week, too, so that you can kind of feel better about yourself. But, yeah, they're they're right in the thick of it. And I, I'm right there with you in that I think that if I was going to pick what the best version of the five or six teams are, it's actually probably Colorado and K-State for me. And I never would have said that I'd be picking the best, one of the two best teams would be Colorado at their peak. But you kind of see that and you're like, okay. But I, I do think that they lose a game down the stretch because their schedule gets a lot tougher uh, in these last few games where beforehand, we, we'd talked yesterday before uh, the K State basketball game that Colorado had only played two teams with a winning record in big 12 play so far. So, and, and one it, of them is Baylor who yeah, we thought, you know, three weeks ago was, was going to be right. firing their coach. So, yeah. So we thought that we thought that Baylor was going to be dead to rights. And uh, the only other team with a winning record, winning record that they've beat uh, in big 12 play, or the only other team that they've played in big 12 play with a winning record has been K state. So you kind of see that and you're like, okay, it will get tougher. And, and I'm not going to predict it for this week, but there is a realistic scenario where K-State, Iowa State, and Colorado are all tied at the end of the week. It would be something. It would be uh, quite the thing. Uh, Well, do you want to be bold? Do you want to say that Iowa State isn't in that tie because they're on the road at KU this weekend? Yeah. Uh, Is KU really going to keep losing all of these games? That that line is very fishy for a team that's two and six. That's all yeah. I'll say. Well, I don't know if Iowa State is going to lose this weekend 
in uh well i was gonna say lawrence in kansas city they but i do lawrence. hey i do know a place where iowa state is going to lose in the next 365 days less than that way less than that now that would be ireland drew galloway because the wildcats are headed to dublin ireland next august for the Aer Lingus college football classic you can join your wildcats in dublin by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. Be there, enjoy it, uh, but also make sure you book your Iowa passport to go watch Farmageddon in Ames this year because it might mean something. Some good vibes going for that game next year, too, because you know the Bosco voice theme song is all that keeps being played. During yeah, it sounds very Iowa. similar. I. I heard it the first time. And I was like, man, that sounds really familiar. And I was like, there's no way. And then I, I heard it again. I was like, I just, it's too similar. Uh, so we might have to do some investigating on the number one, where the, the tune for Scott's theme came from and uh, maybe the, the history of it all. Somebody is Shazam still a thing. Can somebody Shazam the K-State to Ireland video? Can we get <laughs> somebody on that to figure that out? Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's that's really all I had for you today. I just talked a little college football playoff poll that came out, and then also uh, glass half full look for K State and laying out that a team just last season did it. Also, with a lot of chaos out there that was possible with the tiebreaker stuff. Um, now Oklahoma State, it became pretty clear that they were going to have the leg up in the tiebreaker. K State. They essentially do. As long as Colorado loses a game, K-State, we, I don't know that we've found a scenario yet that keeps K-State out if they win their final three. So we'll see how it goes. And go back to what you said earlier about K-State and Colorado probably being the two best teams. I still think K-State at their best is the best team, and I think Colorado at their best is the most dangerous team. Because, yeah, I mean, you think about it, K-State saw Colorado pretty close to their best. Um, because Shadur Sanders, I don't, he's not going to have very many games to that level that he had. And I know that they were missing some of their guys in the receiving core. Okay. But we also know K State lost a handful of defensive players throughout that game and whatever else. I think it all kind of evened out. Um, but man, yeah, it's, it's one of those. If there's a little bit more time and the schedule was a little different. I think if BYU was only needing one more loss, we may be sitting here talking about a K State Colorado rematch. Um, I don't think that'll happen now, but no. that'll be something to to watch for uh, how those two teams handle it because those two might be the ones that feel the best moving forward. I think having this week after that loss to kind of reset for K State is good, as opposed to you know if you go and think about uh, um, like Iowa State, they have to immediately bounce back this week and on the road against a team that just like everybody else we've talked about that's getting ready to play KU, it gets tougher and tougher to be that team that's like, okay, so they've, let me get this straight, they've lost everybody, close game, like they haven't been able to get over the hump, like are they finally going to do it? And it seems like the number might be up, and unfortunately it's us this week. But KC doesn't have to worry about that. They already got past Kansas. Now they have to worry about Arizona State next week, Cincinnati the week after, and the road trip to Ames, which, by the way, seems like Cam Scadaboo may not play this week. For Arizona State, uh, it's kind of an injury situation out there. Didn't play after kind of a weird hit around the shoulder neck area in Stillwater. Might be something to monitor if he will be even available next week when the Sun Devils make their first trip to Manhattan. But that will do it for us today. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching the KSO Show. Back again tomorrow with Drew's recruiting update.